All right, man. Another episode, Random Acts of Podcast. A little different, man. A little, little switch up than the usual. Our guest is all the way up in New Jersey, man. But we had to tap in with the young brother. Yes, sir. But uh, you know, boy, Ampa Valley, Mister J. It's kind of weird because I'm gonna be looking down out here. We need to be looking up here. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> but I'll let our guest uh, introduce himself. Uh, I'm Kamani Wee. I'm actually a, the CEO, Colin Brown, or my brand right here, Honchos. Yeah, I came over here to tell you guys my story, talk to these people. Thank you all for having me. Oh, so, yeah. We appreciate you, man. So uh, let's jump straight in, man. Tell us about uh, how you developed the brand. What was the inspiration behind the name Honchos? Uh, the inspiration behind the name Honchos, it was like, so like, like my dad and then my great granddad, he died though, but they all was business owner, at least, at least like one point in their life. So I just go up, I look up like boss, like what it means to be a boss and it's synonym, it say Honchos. So I'm like, yo, I like that. They didn't talk about like being an owner. Like, it's like a nice name. I'm, like, I'm putting my own little twist on it. And now I took the O out. I mean, the first O and put an X and put a Z at the end. So it really came from like me wanting to be my own, like start my own legacy, start my own thing. And I chose me to be a boss. So I'm like, yeah, that's the right one. Yeah, it's sure. really stuff more than anything else. Yeah, man, I fuck with that name for sure. A lot of yeah, yeah a lot of people like the name, and I'm just I just be trying to push a lot of positivity in there, all that behind it as well. There we go. So how long have you had the brand up and running now? Uh, how long officially? Like, my first time dropping a piece was December, so it's only been, like, three four months. But it's, okay. it's been going great. It's going a lot better than I expected. Nah, that's what's up. It, it's, it's definitely got, like, it's, like, it's like hills and valleys or peaks and valleys, whatever they want to call it. It definitely right. does. A lot of times, you get to the point, like, yo, I really don't want to do this no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, like, I'm just trying to keep myself motivated. Like, one thing I have to do to keep myself motivated is... Like, I, like, blocked out everyone's story on Instagram. Like, my main page, I follow straight motivational pages. So, yeah, all, sure. all, I, all I could see was this motivation all day. And this motivated me to keep going. It still does today. So, Man, that's dope. Yeah. So, what's the hardest part about starting your brand or a brand in general? Hardest part about starting your brand? I would, the hardest part about starting your brand to me or everybody else would be, my advice to everybody else would be, like, having that brand image and, like, like, like what I want to say, like, like having like that brand image. I want to say, like, like people know like what your brand is about. A lot of people the brand don't have an identity; they're just selling right. clothes. It's almost like a boutique to a, to an extent because they their brand doesn't have identity. Like you see, Nike is for athletes. Every all these brands have their identity, and a lot of right. brands are starting up now. They don't have that, so they just selling clothes. But that that was definitely the hardest thing for me. Like hardest thing for me, I had to find my identity before I even sold a piece. Damn, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Um, we got uh one of your hoodies pulled up here, and we I, and I'm I'm probably jumping the gun, but I want to jump straight into it just because of what you said. Uh, we're looking at the um, take the risk uh hoodie, the yeah. global hoodie, global hoodie. Now I find this one dope because it really does speak to exactly what you were saying. Bet on yourself, take the risk. Um, I think that's dope. You know what I mean? As an entrepreneur, that's one of the biggest challenges that most people face initially is, am I going to risk it all for this brand or for this idea? And man, I think that's hoodie really speaks yeah. volume. Everything you just said. Yeah. N n another thing I had with that hoodie is the skull. Like, like a lot of people know, but a skull symbolizes death. So it was like right. kind of me like, and then all the stuff in the old really starting the new journey. That's why I call it the global hoodie. So I really want to like, all right, now I'm serious. Now I'm about to take over with it. It was like the death, like basically like the beginning of a new chapter for myself. But a lot of people don't know that. It's it's like a lot of pieces I put out, it, it's, it'd be a meaning behind it. But I don't like, like, like just tell you, it. kind of got to look at it and like, you know what I'm saying? Make your own interpretation of the whole piece. But I'll be having the meaning behind everything I put out. Yeah, nah, this is dope for sure. Um... And it's a lot of ways, you know, I think that's dope that you don't just come out and, and, and give people the full story because with a hoodie like this, it does allow for people to interpret the meaning, you know, and give you uh, their, their interpretations of it. So that's dope. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. So let me ask you this. Do you design these, um, do you design yourself or do you hire a designer? How do you go about things? It's certain things that I can design myself, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not the best designer, but there's some things I can design myself or put together. 
But like a lot of times I have an image in my head or like I just pick an overall theme for the piece. And then if I can't like uh, design it myself, I will either hit up somebody and just have them design it for me. Got you. That's dope. All right. So let's, go, let's take a little quick gander at your website, man. I love the design of the website. Eh? For sure. So I love the intro. The intro pop. A lot of people don't have like yeah. stuff like this. But a lot of people don't even have splash pages, period. Yeah. Sure. So what's uh, so what's like the motivation behind like or inspiration behind your website? Inspiration behind my website is I'm I'm not well, I can't uh see uh, but um Oh yeah, I just did I just like the, you good, you good. Oh, okay, yeah. Inspiration behind my website is like like with that, I actually did that beginning like how you see like just the people walking around is like because that like it's just in my eyes like if you see that you like all right let me go and see what's in it right see what this whole brand about then you see how you said like all right, i really like like this how like the beginning the intro page is now you can be like all right let me see what this clothing brand around let's see what they do now you go in there and you see the pieces you can see my story and you really feel like you connected with the brand after that point so that's really why i did it just something to catch your eye off the jump and make you want to see more for sure that's dope man all right so let's yeah. get into the website a little bit more got, yeah. got a couple pieces on here my favorite one is yeah. this uh, the melanin man that melanin tapestry something yeah. else yo yeah. something else. A, lot, a lot of people may me to come out with that one again i, I don't know i might do it hey you might have to man that joint crazy that joint crazy i love uh, what you put together with that yeah, yeah it, it was more like a black history month piece i'm like let me just show some appreciation to like just the black community as a whole because that and they I am a part right, of it. Right, right. So my appreciation, I put that to y'all. People love that. Man, that hoodie is cold. And one thing that I love about it, we've definitely seen, um, you know, a lot of people starting to make their own clothes with the tapestries today. But I love yeah. how unique your design is on the front. You got a, yeah. a, a set of turntables with some hands on it. Um, a brother yeah. brushing his head. You got the grills flashing. It's so much of black culture that 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 is really is just in the front of the hoodie, and then even on the back, yeah. like the way that you patched everything is crazy. Yeah, I, I would definitely say that that that's that's my favorite. I enjoyed making this piece more than I ever enjoyed making anything else. I I got to be the most creative with this piece. Like, yeah, and like it, it, it this piece felt the most natural because it was like almost like telling about myself and like how I was brought up. For, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so like me growing up, I got to a lot of see like a lot of the hopscotch on the street. You got to uh, get the chalk, make your own like little numbers. Right, you right. You got the double dust, you got all that. You got the, um, we used to play kids. Like that's what I come from. from right. And that's Outside. like, it was, it, 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 felt, it felt natural to me. Yeah. It, like seeing the grills, the grills at the, uh, what's called the beauty shop, like going there with my mom, my sister, all them. Like, yeah, it felt the most natural. I'm like, yo, this really, like, I love that. Yeah, the hoodie cold, man. Like I say, bro, I tip my hat for real. So, yeah, thank you. So, on the outside looking in, I don't design clothes. This is like, this will be and damn near impossible to make. So, how would you would give, if you had to give somebody like me advice or anybody and it was trying to get into clothing, how do you go about making something like that? Because I'm not into what you said, call it tapestry. Tapestry, yeah, yeah. I'm not into that. I don't know nothing about it. Uh, I mean, the the way, like, are you talking about making, like, the design or, like, the clothing? Design, design? All, of it, all of it, pretty much, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, like, hey, as for design, like, I, I use, me personally, I use Adobe, like, Illustrator. I use Illustrator and Photoshop because it's the easiest, right. like, to me. And at first, it was complicated. I had to, like, YouTube, damn near everything I was trying to do. But it, it gets easier as you use it more. And for, as a, a like, making the clothes. Like you can either go on Alibaba you, uh, or Instagram. They got manufacturers as well. Right. But China has a lot. Like China has a lot. China's a fashion. She doesn't be China to like, look. <laughs> yeah. if, if you really want something made good, like to a T, go with yeah. that. But Pakistan, I, I use Pakistan too. But that's more for like something simpler. If I need something that's done perfectly and really on point, I'm going with China. But yeah, you can either use a China or a Pakistan manufacturer. It really depends on you. So let me ask you this, man. How long did you actually research you know, um, just what it would take to to do things like this, you know, uh, um, working with uh, outside vendors, you know, China is a, a far distance and a lot of people don't even trust that kind of uh, distance, you know, uh, when it comes to their brand, their product. What made you really say, 
uh, this is the route that I want to go with this with this brand. Uh, what what made me want to go with like like the China and like just the manufacturer overseas? I'm like, cause you know you can there are places you can get your stuff made in in, uh, in the United States, yeah. But like even like like just the prices alone, like the prices for USA is ridiculous. Yeah. Like I might go Philly sometime get some of my shirts done or something like that, and I pay for fi- uh, like fifty shirts would be like sixty on it. I'm like, damn. But like, yeah, but like China, China, like they look out on prices a lot. Pakistan as well. Yeah. But like, I wanted to go to USA so bad because it's so much simpler and right. right. But it's the prices. It just made more sense for me to go overseas and just get it done and just get it shipped to me. However much they take, how much time they take. So what was, what's some of the pros and cons going out of the, like overseas getting your stuff made? Oh yeah, Pro, pros and cons. Uh, what you want me to start? Pros or cons? Let's so, start pros, with let's pros. start with the good first, pros. then let's get to the bad. The, the good things, I mean, yeah, you can get a uh, the price can be the first because it, it'll be a lot cheaper than staying here and getting your stuff done. Uh, another pro is uh, sometimes they have a lot more experience. Mm-hmm. Like, like I know other China brands, they have a lot more experience with like the bigger brands. Like some of these big brands that we buy from today, a lot of their stuff, majority, majority of it, all their stuff is from right. China. So they have a lot more experience than like a USA manufacturer or something like that. But yeah, yeah, that those those are like two big pros for me, and if they can get your stuff done right. But as for cons, like the cons, I would say of going overseas, the only cons is sometimes they won't do it how you want it. Like, like with USA, I know my manufacturer in USA. Like I go in, I go in, right? And right. like I literally tell them like how I want the shirt. Like I sit there, and measure, sit there, like measure everything out for them. Like like tell them that, like they can't mess up because I'm right, right there with them. I'm exactly what to do. But like in China, like you can tell them everything you give them the tech pack rules, everything to do, and they will still mess up. In Pakistan <laughs> as well, but but it's like yeah, that, that's probably the biggest conf in the shipping time because sometimes like it take like three to four weeks to so a month. Some people I know some brand out there, not mine, but like sometimes like they take like over a month to like get their clothes and stuff. But like, yo, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that, those probably be the two biggest cons for me. Yeah. Have you ever had like a bad experience so far? Like, for example, yeah. like like not get your guy in your clothes, or like it just came out ass or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I definitely had a bad experience, but the clothes didn't get to me for me to even see it in person. Like my manufacturer, yeah. he had sent it to me. I'm like, bro, you know that's not right. Like, 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 like I sample. Like, uh, sometimes I get samples. Other right. places, my samples they always like one point, but like in a bulk, like say I'm doing a bulk order, like we're just like say like. 50 hoodies. Say I'm just doing 50 hoodies for a boat. And I get these 50 hoodies. And I'm seeing like them making the hoodie in the process. Like I caught them out right there. Like, nah, that's not right. I won't even give them the chance to ask, actually send a hoodie to me. That I get an impression like, yo, these is wrong. Like, nah, I correct them. As soon as I see it, like, nah, that's not right. Yeah. So I, n- another thing with manufacturer is when you manufacture, like when you go with the manufacturer, make sure they're sending you pictures and videos throughout the whole process. Like, don't just send them your design and your tech pack let them just go through the whole thing and don't see nothing correct more than like most of the time they probably already get something wrong because like they weren't corrected or anything they just went like how they thought it should be mm-hmm. and there is a huge um uh uh language barrier you know what i mean so the way that they understand english even you know what i mean just how we how we talk is 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 uh, botched by the time it gets yeah. it's the then it's like playing telephone, you know, one person trying to explain to another person how to design it, you know, what I mean? <laughs> some, some <laughs> shit gets lost in translation. Yeah, because uh, like a lot of times with my uh, Pakistan manufacturer, like I, he, he'll, he'll call me. I don't yeah. know what he's saying. I'm like, yo, this text. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, like, like, he found me. I'm like, yo, what are you talking about? <laughs> then he just texted me. I'm like, all right, bro, I understand you now. I just text him back. Like, apparently, yeah. hot. But yeah, China. China China, they, they they be cool on the phone sometimes, but the Pakistan manufacturers they 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 be having they be on and off a little bit. Yeah, China do you, do they rush you? Uh, as for I ain't gonna lie with China, I had to rush them more than they had to rush me. Cause like, yeah. like if I if I'm coming to you, everything there like I already got the money, already got the design tech, already got everything. So I'm right. really paying you to get it done. Like a lot of times I had to rush them. Like yo, let me get pictures, let me do this, let me do that. But you do like if you honestly care about your clothing brand, 
Like what you're doing, you got to do that. You can't really just send them the money, send them your take back, send them uh, your mock up, expect them just to get it right. You got to stay on their ass. Right. That's showing them that you actually care about like what's going on with your business. Definitely feel that. How do you feel about like clothing designers doing like the pre order up? Like, the, and, no. Yeah. I actually did. I actually did the pre order. I'm actually have done the pre order route before. I, honestly, if I feel like if you're just starting off, you're not sure how many sales you're about to get. You're not really marketing your uh, clothing brand. You're not doing X, Y, and Z. I would definitely say do the pre order route. Cause that that gives you the opportunity to see how many people was really like um messing with your clothing brand, like so you don't have to order a whole bunch of hoodies. Now you sitting on inventory, no one want to buy the hoodie, all right? So, like if you do the build route, it's like all right, I done seen twenty people want this hoodie. Now you know people actually do want the city. You could still order a little extra. Like with me, right. I know like even after they like put their orders in, like I'll order some extra because I know like once summer come around, I want to actually get people faces. Like I want to go like. Like I, I'm not gonna lie. I like the the traditional route more than the online route. I, like I want to be there in your face, talk to you why I made this because like it's like a lot of customers could like gravitate to that a lot more. I know myself like like I'd rather you talk to me about it and I'd be way more willing to buy it. You just showing me on Instagram or something like I know that myself. So I honestly like get back to traditional selling. Like I, I like doing that myself. That's what's up. So let me ask you this, man, because uh. Everything like you're articulating yourself very well. Everything's very thorough, especially for you to be only a few months in with your brand. What did you do before starting your brand? Uh, I actually made my first shirt in eighth grade. I, I ain't sell it, of course, but I was just like just just dibbling, dabbling in it. Cause yeah, like, always wanted to wear my own clothes. Like like I see like everybody like like Nike, you know what I mean? I'm like, I wonder if I could make that myself. But like, sure. have my own name to it. So yeah, like like really like. I don't even know. I don't even know how to put it for real. It's like I, I really just wanted to like really just make my own stuff. To be honest, now nah, I definitely feel that. Like so, like eighth grade to now, like I would like pick up little pieces from like here and there, or like just watch other people do it, and like to see where they went wrong, and like I just like pick up on that and not do that, or like do that, but like make it go right. Because like some people make mistakes within the color brand. But they, they, they're fi- a lot of them be like fixable mistakes. For sure. So, like, I, yeah. I see like the mistakes they make and I just fix it and I just everything go right. So like that's how I really do it. Like I took years on years, like really just like like studying, not like studying like on the computer, but like right. I was studying other people doing it, which is a lot better for me because like, I actually get to see it in real time. But, for sure. Um, you, you, YouTube is helpful as well. Like if you want tips or anything, YouTube is definitely helpful. I watch a lot of YouTubers like that. I'm I, like, actually doing it. I like to watch a lot of YouTubers that are bigger than me, just like just to get the feel for it. To be honest, yeah. Um, now nah, you're doing all of the groundwork for sure, and I think it shows with your packaging. You know what I mean? Just how the label, I mean the the website rather is presented. Uh, your clothes seem very high quality. You know, so I definitely <laughs> took I had to you there. Um. Real quick and pull up uh the rest of the hoodies. One that really stuck out to me was this uh tie dye, uh not tie dye, but the the faded pink hoodie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That joint insane. Look, I like that one a lot too. That's crazy, yeah. Especially with like the, the rough edges on the bottom of the hoodie, like the detail in it. A one, A one. Like yeah, that that made making that piece like like that, that making that one it was kind of like like going like with the manufacturer with this one it was like it was very difficult especially because i did this one from pakistan so it's not really in china so like like either they would like bleach it too much or too little to where you couldn't see like this the faded part yeah you know, like, it, it, getting this hoodie done actually this hoodie took the longest to make out of all my hoodie because yeah. like it had to be just right in the middle and they didn't have to do it on one hoodie they had to do it on 30 other ones yeah Yo, like I gotta make sure all of them look the same. That, that this city took a minute to make. I ain't gonna lie. I feel that. So let me ask you this, man. Uh, financially, has have there been any um, n- not to say mishaps, you know what I mean, but just things that you weren't projecting when you first started the brand that made it a challenge for you to bounce back from, or or what were some of your challenges, you know, throughout uh- developing your brand? Uh, besides like how I talked about like staying motivated before, mm. like it definitely on like the financial side, 
like you just watching like like watching other people you don't account to a lot of things like uh let's say like shipping because i do free shipping do like yeah. yo that's like a big take out of your profit like these are these bro eight nine dollars to shit i'm like yo i didn't even know i had to do this yeah so like um, that uh, another thing is promotion promotion is big i didn't like like before that i didn't like before i started i didn't account promotion at all like you just running ads on instagram and stuff like that i never got that or shipping so it was like it, it didn't put me in a financial hole i would say but it definitely took a lot out like towards like it took a lot out like of my profit and everything everything that i was making because i didn't yeah. like you had to do that until i actually started doing it gotcha. so yeah, those, those are the biggest two for me but shipping and definitely uh shipping and uh what's what call it promotion marketing yeah. yeah like like you you can do natural like uh organic marketing mm -hmm. but like me i do organic plus the paid promotion like like i probably send myself to like a fit page i just do stuff like that because like that also helps you as well because these uh fit pages have a bigger audience than me they have a lot mm -hmm. more followers than me so i send them over and i pay them to post it like promotion is probably the biggest thing I ain't gonna lie, promotion probably, promotion alone probably cost me more than all the hoodies I got put together, like all the bulk I got put together. And, but that's, the, hey, that's what it takes. That's what it takes. It definitely takes you believing enough to invest in your brand. And a lot of folks, you know, I, I keep going back to that hoodie, that global hoodie, but a lot of folks ain't willing to take that risk, man. Yeah, true. A lot, yeah. Like, like, uh, and before I started, like, like, with just things, Cause like I make very like calculated risks, so I'm right. like, you know, like shall I, shall I do this? Like, like I know it's gonna take. Like I'm talking to my dad about it. He's telling me like, yo, it's really gonna take some money. It's really. Gonna... I'm like, damn, should I really do it? Cause I took like a lot. I took like a lot of calculated risk for like, if it's like too big of a risk, I wouldn't have even took it before. But with yeah. this, like, yo, bro, let me just let go and just see what happened. Cause it couldn't change my life. So I'm like, right, sure, let me risk. Cause a lot, a lot of people nowadays, like they scared to take a risk because they don't want to be in a bad position or like just completely fall off. I'm like, yo, I gotta take this risk because it really could, uh, it really could be good for me. And that's why I like really try to put like a positive energy towards it. Cause that's all I want from for like, like I would try to put like no negativity around my brain, like right, try, like even right. through the brain. Like I wouldn't even like, like it's like some designs like just be outrageous, like. The designs with like the guns and the killing and all that stuff. And I would I would never put that on like son I make. That's not what I'm trying to put the world at all. So like yeah. That's not real shit. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, man, how old are you? I'm eighteen. Head and shoulders above niggas. <laughs> hey man, that eighteen bro, I salute you and everything that you're doing, man. This is crazy. This is crazy for you to be eighteen and you know, really have as much as you do invested into your brand as serious as you are, you know, again, I really do salute, uh, salute what you got going on, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I know niggas in their thirties got brands or well, quote unquote brands presentation, not even close to as good as yours. So salute to you on that, man. Right. Right. So I'm about to bring the website back on a spray. Like, like, how do you come up with like some of your price points? On uh, price bit? points, uh, I I ain't gonna lie, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I gonna feel about this one, but like um <laughs> y'all y'all know uh just like in numerology you know like uh in China you know uh the number of money in China is six and eight if y'all didn't know that yeah. so like like a lot of my prices either like you see the sixty two like like a six and a two equals eight or like that's why a lot of these are sixty because the number eight and six are <clears throat> funny numbers so you see a lot of my price they're around the six or eight in some type of way. I won't ever go away from six and eight. Word, word. It's, okay. It's just about like being on that frequency with like the six and eight for real. So that's why for sure. I like keep my price points. Nah, I think that's dope. There's definitely a lot of knowledge if you study numbers and shit. Like if you really start to break things down, uh, you ain't a mason, are you? Nah, nah, nah. nah, nah I, I ain't in. <laughs> I don't know about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask, man. Hey, but nah, they definitely break down like numerology and mm -hmm. such. And uh, there's a lot of meaning behind numbers that people really don't know. Yeah. That is different. But nah, that, that's dope. And it, it plays really well into your story. Yeah. And res yeah, respectfully, I'm just look I'm I'm looking at it again. I'm like, you can't really argue with the price of the thing about the hoodie. 
Like some brands, they charge a hundred and something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, outrageous. Days of- yeah, man. And out the gate, you know what I mean? So, yeah, they even get like, you know what I'm saying? They don't got no consistent customers, no returning customers. It's out the gate. Cause a lot of people, a lot of people don't do it. Cause I like, like, like another thing with this color brand, I want to have something where I can build it over time, like gradually see it grow. Like, I got could never in my life, like, grown something to the point where, like, y'all could as like, like, see it to this day. So I'm like, with this brand, I'm going to grow it. Like, no matter what I got to go through, I'm just going to get through it and grow this brand to how I want it to be. But a lot of people, they do it just for the money. Like, everybody look at me. When it becoming so popular now, it's looked at as, like, just a quick money scheme. Because you can yep. post on, on uh, like, the pre-order route you was talking about. A lot of people, they can just post hoodie with the pre-order route and a whole bunch of people come and pay for it. Like, that's how a lot of people really look at it. Like, to an extent, I feel like the coal industry, like, how it is now, I feel like it took a hit with, like, how many brands are coming in now, how they really look at it. Some people, I love people that, that do coding, like, that actually, like, love, like, I love coding, but, yo, like, it's, right. it, it's like, like, it's like life or death to them. Like, I, like, I talk really? to them about, like, how, like, how much things change. They're like, yeah, I find it, like, like, this, they find it, like, disrespectful to a point because it's, like, people just coming there, like, just disrespecting the industry as a whole. Nah, that's a really good point, man. Um, I think with anything, you have to have a true passion for it or else it is going to come off like a money grab. With yeah. clothes, clothes is a necessity. Yeah. And sometimes I think people forget that though it's a necessity, people still want to be proud to wear whatever they have on. Like it has to go past me supporting you. You know what I mean? I have to be able to support the brand, the vision in the brand, you know, where things are going. Um, and I think you're nailing it with everything that you have with this honcho. Yeah. The melanin hood is crazy. It speaks to a lot of prominent things in the black community. Mm-hmm. The uh, global hoodie, the way that that's designed with the skull and such. And even what you said about it, you know, killing off a lot of things in the past or even killing off doubt, you know, and yeah. fear. And and I'm going to take that risk. That's 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 crazy. You know, the, the name of the brand itself, Honchos, we are bosses, you know, and that's something that people do want to model themselves around. So yeah. it but 18, brother, man, hey, <laughs> you got a lot of wisdom. You know what I'm saying? A lot going for yourself, for sure. Definitely, definitely. Um. Damn, I forgot. Yeah, another one because I forgot my question. Got come, <laughs> come back to me. All right. So, um, where are you planning on taking the brand? So, I see right now that you have a strong focus on the hoodies and such. And you did mention that you want to grow this over time. What are some of the things that you want to get into with the brand? Uh, I definitely want to get into like, like, like jeans and stuff like that. I think that that's where I go next because like, like I know how to make everything else from the shorts, the shirts. But the one thing I never touched was a pair of jeans. I'm like, yo, that's going to be a challenge for me. So I need to get into that. Like, I need to, like, challenge myself for it within the brand at, uh, as well. So I'm like, I, w- I really do want to get into jeans. And a lot of people, jeans sell a lot. So I'm like, 100 yeah, yeah I'm, I want to get into the jeans, the sweatsuits, of course. Like, uh, the shorts, the shirts, all that, of course. Cause I'm just starting off. So I'm, like, trying to give you, like, an introduction of, like, right. like uh, of my brand overall. But jeans is definitely, like. Like where I really want to like take my brand because I, I I do want to drop a lot of jeans. Like I want to drop like sets of color like like to a sense. Like say I, I drop like like a hoodie with the jeans and the shirt. So if you take off the hoodie, you still got the shirt that go with the jeans. I I, I want to right do right like that. So it's like this fall I'm thinking like yo like this whole summer I'm be working on like yo I gotta get the jeans. I gotta get the jeans. I, I've been thinking about that heavy. Oh uh, yes, but I yeah jeans or even sweatpants because like i'm a big fan of the hoodie and the sweatpants like yeah. uh like the pink one mm-hmm. that dope yeah the pink sweatpants yeah, bro that did that sweatpants to go with it yeah not that, 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 that crazy. that's crazy because because a friend told me that and i saw i'm like yeah like around like the like the fall winter i'm like yeah i'm probably gonna re-release those again but having the pants with it this song instead of just yeah dope so yeah uh at, after this really like after these next couple hoodies for real like everything's just gonna be in a set. Like I'm not like you. Like I want people to be able to buy the shirt, uh, hoodie and pants with it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely gonna get into like more of like sets type of things. But I'm not really trying to do one piece like or just like a couple hoodies for much longer. To be honest, right? I feel that. 
So uh, what are some of your inspirations with with the clothing, whether it be different brands, different designers, um, <clears throat> or even lifestyle things? Mm. Uh, me, like, like uh, I'm just going on every aspect. I'm going to start with, like, lifestyle. Like, like I, I used to hoop. So it, it's like, I used to, like, wear, like, um, a lot of, like, sweatsuits and stuff. So like, I definitely want to get into that because that's, like, more, like, me for real. Now, occasionally, like, we go out, kids, like, put on some jeans and stuff. So it is like, like for like that type of lifestyle, I want to hit like different pockets. Like so I want to get the chill people. I want to get the people that I put on like that love to put on jeans and stuff. That's where I like, like just let people that want to dress like more high end and stuff. That's really like how I'm trying to go. But I'm still trying to cater to the people that like to just wear chill stuff, just the chill sweatsuits. Like he said, I the one like cater to like them both in a way, but not like right, get right. The one more than the other. I really just want to like kind of like even it out and like have both of them. I feel that. But like, in, like influence watching this, uh, it's this dude named Hollywood Shaq. I watch him a lot. Like, like every time okay. people, like a YouTube video, I'll probably be on there watching that. Uh, it's um, it's another brand in Philly. They name Humble. Yo, I I look at them a lot. Like yo, like heavy. Like they 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 they're definitely like the biggest inspiration behind the whole brand for real. Like the way he like like preach like a lot of positivity. Within like the stuff he make, like he go and like talk to kids and all that. Like yo, that that's yeah. that's like something I would love to do. I'm like yo, if I take my brand any route, like just like with the message itself, I'm taking it his because like that's what like I like to do. I like talking to people, like just stuff like that, motivating them and all. That. I love doing stuff like that. So I look at him, yeah, big inspiration. That's dope. So um, you said you were trying to get into doing like jeans or whatnot. I hope I'm not jumping the gun. How do you feel about like? Getting into like sneakers or like hats and stuff. Like Yo, that. yeah, hats, hats. Yeah, I forgot hats. I'm definitely gonna do that. Oh uh, yeah, um, sneaks. Yeah, it's it's like I would definitely do sneakers, but like I think I would have to get like a like a way bigger audience to do sneakers. Like, I bet. Like, yeah, no, 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 I think they, like growing up, like if they ain't see your sneakers before or something like that, like you getting like clown for that, like, <laughs> like on your, your ass. You know what I'm saying like. I definitely have to get like a way bigger audience. You know what I'm saying? Like, so people can be like, yo, it's like, I want those shoes. Like, I want to go out wearing these shoes. But like, um, wearing like other brands, clothing, like shoes and stuff is getting a lot more popular. I'll say that though. I'm sure. Like, Are you familiar with the uh, SIA? Uh, what's it called? SIA Collective, SIA, uh, S I A. I know. I never, I never uh, seen them before yet. Y'all can pull them up. I probably know them by like, uh, by like seeing it, like not by name. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a, he's a up and, well, I mean, he's been doing it for years now. He designs his own sneakers and such, but, um, he trying now to get deals with the NBA players and such and start coming out with his own athletic line of sneakers. Yeah. But, um, I would say, I would recommend him as someone to check out yeah. just because, um, his approach to sneakers is unique in itself mm -hmm. uh he's getting a lot of support for a very you know unique design uh, all of his shoes are very unique uniquely designed but uh even more so i would say that he gives a lot of free game on on the topics of getting shoes you know avoiding copyright infringements for those who you know want to try and keep the same silhouettes of the the jordan yeah don't a lot of people like, being hit with that lately like maybe you know like the little dunk, the air force ones the i don't know what Maybe a hit with that, like crazy. Yeah, that was about to be my next question. Like, how do you feel about bigger brands suing smaller brands? Um, I feel like like the bigger brands know people gonna wear their stuff regardless. So why you like? I, I feel like they just trying to have like everyone really come to them for that specific uh like that specific product instead of like like going to like a smaller brand who may even sometimes do it better, have a better design than they have. Like, yeah, I, I feel like it's that. Like, they want people just to come to them for that product instead of, like, going to, like, a smaller brand. Like, really trying to, like, control, like, the, um, what's it called? Control, like, the whole, like, I forgot what it is. It's, it's not Monopoly. It's not, like, a Monopoly thing, but, like, like, they want to be, like, dominate that product more than any other, like, brand will. So, like, I feel like, like, Nike is suing a lot of people with making the Jordan 1s. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think Nike, like, Nike, you too big to be doing that, in my opinion. Like, 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 let these smaller brands get their money, get hustle, do whatever they got to do. Like, it's not really a deep. At the end of the day, it's still just a pair of sneaks. Yeah, when it first happened, I thought, like, maybe just Nike was, like, setting the exact, like, because Nike always used to sue people, but it was, like, one of them things where, like, 
it was all like a cease and desist. It was like it never right. ever went to court, but like it just it seemed like just Nike just out for blood right now. Like they just like actually like putting it pushing it through court. Like you legit got to get a lawyer to fight these cases. Yeah, this shit is crazy. They they see a lot of people was really making money off. Like like I'm not gonna lie, they do, they do be still in the Jordan One design. It still got the Nikes on it. Like it, it even the dunk and and the Air Force Ones. I mean, uh, we've seen a lot of brands take Nike silhouettes yeah. and really like change one or two things, yeah. and it, it still has the same essence of Nike. You know what I mean? So I think that's why they they put a major stomp on it, mm -hmm. uh, just because it's becoming a bit rampant right it, now it, but it definitely is but like well like and you still gotta protect your brand at the end yeah, of the day <laughs> definitely true yeah you do but yeah but like in a way like like i respect nike for it though because it's like yo if you're doing your own thing don't come over here and copy us like like yo that that's one thing i really dies in my brand like i don't want my brand to be like this brand this brand or that brand so it's like like with my pieces i try to make them like like not like completely different but like, yo, like, you know, only my brand makes this type of hoodie or something. Cause it, cause it's like, I don't really want to copy nobody else. Cause I know within myself, like if I was to go and copy somebody else's hoodie and just put my name on it or my design, I would not feel good about it. Like it wouldn't really exactly. be the same. So it's like, right. When Nike, like I respect them for doing that. Cause it's like, yo, if you want to sell your own shoes and everything, bro, at least make your own design, like put some effort into it instead of just changing Nike sign to like just something like, I don't know, Thunderbolt or something like that. I like, really don't hit. I've seen niggas do rolling dice as the Nike yeah. sign and all kinds of shit, uh, 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 sunflower and shit. So mm -hmm. I think one reason why Nike really is going the route of sewing people today, and especially as much as they have been, is because people aren't adding any variation. Nothing. Their entire brand is built around that Nike silhouette. Babe even got sued, and for years now, they've had the Air Force One aesthetic. And and pretty much nothing else. Wait, are are they still selling those like the uh, Bape Star Jones? Oh yeah, they just yeah they still selling them. Oh. but but they just recently got sued recently. Oh okay, okay. and it's crazy because like the Bapes they they were popping like twenty years ago. So yeah, it's like I remember so sued those then. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah you should have sued them then. It's kind of yeah. weird to sue them now. Yeah. I don't understand them suing Bape mainly because they have a <clears> lot, <throat> like Bape has been a huge brand in streetwear, mm -hmm. in fashion period uh, for, for so long now that um, I think it's one of those things to where if we're going to get everybody, we got to get Bape too. Sure. But that one was definitely the oddball out. Yeah, true. Definitely. You had named some brand, but are there any like mainstream streetwear brands that inspire you? Uh, main, main. Um, let me say, who do I really look at? Uh, it's not, I lie, it's not too many I look at that's mainstream for. Mm. Uh, I, I kind of look at smaller ones more than I look at the mainstream. I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, but if I had to look, pick any, uh, Dang, I didn't really know. Probably like uh, Mary or something like that. Like, I just go look at like, because I am trying to get in jeans, so I look at like how they make yeah. jeans a lot. But as for like hoodies and stuff, nah, I already look at no mainstream brand. Especially up there with you, like a Mary is like the most popular yeah. jeans, right? Like the Jersey area. That makes, that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, before you, because I, because I'm, I'm already, I'm already, uh, say it, man, you, you're a pretty big brand, man. So, What's some of your first people that like hit hit, hit you up and like, hey man, your your clothing line is fire? Uh, I would probably because it, it was it was a group of people I showed before I dropped it, like my closest friends, my mom, my dad. So I probably and like my grandparents and all them. So I will mm. probably say yeah them before anything. Like like once I got like the people close people around me, once I got they stamp of approval, I'm like yeah, it's time to go. Cause it, cause it's like if they if they really and I like. Another thing I do, like, when I ask them opinion, I'm like, yo, be honest. Like, don't lie to me. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, yeah. you not honest is really not going to help me at the end of the day. It's really going to hurt me. But, like, yeah, yeah. ask for their honest opinion. I'm like, yo, sh like, is this nice? They're like, yo, yeah, 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 do it, do it, do it. And now they see me coming out with new stuff. Like, yo, this hard. Like, yeah, like, like just, like, even though they were the first people to see it, like, they are still engaged to this day. Because, like, yo, what is he dropping next? Like, yo, they, honestly, it, it's, it's cool. 
like seeing like your mom, your dad, everyone around you, like really like tuning in, like see what you about to drop next. But yeah, that's yeah, for sure. Cool. That's definitely one of the coolest parts, though. All right. So out of the two, like aesthetic wise and comfortability, what's more important, being comfortable in your clothes or like getting a fit off? <laughs> Personally, bro, uh, it really depend on the event. Like, say I'm like going out, <laughs> I can I'm definitely that. looking to get the fit off, bro. Like, I, 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 right. I didn't like, 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 I didn't went out and definitely wore some uncomfortable jeans before. So, like, <laughs> I, definitely, I definitely did that before. So, it really depends. Right. Firstly, it depends on the event. But, like, majority of the time, I'm looking for comfort. Like, if I'm, like, the little aesthetic fit, it's probably, like, 15 to 25% of the time. But the other 75 to 85, I'm definitely looking for the comfort fit. So, I probably yeah. lean more towards comfort. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. With your brand, which one do you lean more closer to? Uh, well, my brand more I lean towards more like comfort, but you can still wear it out somewhere. No, I'm trying to yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. But like that melanin, man, look, you got me locked, man. I'm about to grab one of the melanin hoodies if they still available. Nah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely thinking about restocking those. I might do that before the uh, summer, before the summer. All right, I'm be on the lookout, man. <laughs> yeah. What? Or and I mean, not just that, even the, uh, uh, the globe, like I say, that global hoodie, man, too hard. Uh, I'm looking at that pink hoodie, you know, you definitely got some strong pieces, man. I definitely yeah. want to grab something, you know what I mean? Show some support, yeah. show some love. Um, uh, let me ask you this, when it comes to organizing your ideas for the brand, what are some of the, the routes that you take? Do you, uh, yeah, yeah. So matter of fact, this is a great opportunity for you to talk about tech packs for those who, who aren't, aren't, aren't familiar. Yeah. All right. So, so a tech pack basically, so like you get like a blank hoodie, like it's like a blank hoodie, but it's like a PNG file. You know, what PNG is like no background. Right. So right. like if that, you put it like probably like, and like you put it just like in a little file, like on Adobe and then I go on there and basically I put all my designs on there. Like, like the placement where I want them, like, uh, like a, how a tech pack help me is like, say like, you see how this hoodie is like, like this far down, like, like I, I'm able to tell them like how far to put the design, like how big I want it. Like with a tech pack, that helps you with all that. Like mm -hmm. I know some people, they just do a mock-up and just send it to them without a tech pack, like without like, like the dimensions of all their designs and everything. Like mm -hmm. that's very important to me. Cause like before I even finish like send it to my manufacturer, like I like size everything out. So like, I know exactly how I want this hoodie to be. And like, like with them, like when they're making it, I like why they're making. I'll tell them like, all right, send me like put like uh, what's it called? Not the ruler, but like the uh, whatever, whatever this thing is. Yeah, so, yeah, they measure, yeah, they measure. So I like, yo, put a tape measure and just just measure that for me, cause like, yo, I'm like so specific, like I'm that uh, specific. I mean specific with it. I'm like, yo, like that's not right. Now nah, you probably gotta do that over, cause like yeah. I I like measure it out, like everything is gonna be how I want it to be, cause end day I'm selling it to these customers. I need everything to be on point. But like, yeah, tech pack definitely helps with that. Cause I'm able to put like the placement of the design, like whether I want it like to be like embroidery, screen, puff print. Like, I'm able to do all that on the tech pack. Tell you how big the design is gonna be. Uh, I even like like with me, I do my own size chart. So like um like the size of my hoodies, like I send in the size chart and everything, and they make it like according to the size chart. Like like all that is like tech pack is probably to me, it's the most important thing. Cause like mm -hmm. I need. I need everything about the the piece to be right. Like I can't have like no misses with it, especially like with a sample. Cause like with a sample is usually what I show my customers. So like right. the sample thoughts that I'm showing to you, most likely not even gonna come back and look for it again. Cause you already seen that it's messed up. So like with a sample, I need everything to be right. And the tech pack really helps you with that. Like it keeps everything organized. That at the end of the day, you have everything organized in one file. So it makes it a lot easier for your manufacturer as well. That's dope. That's dope. Damn, I just learned a lot. I didn't know nothing about this. Yeah, that's why I asked, man. I wanted him to uh, <laughs> educate everybody. I mean, <clears throat> a lot of brands don't, you, you, let me say this, a lot of like small local brands don't use tech packs. Of course, they're not getting shit manufactured either, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, he, he again, I, I salute you on just how well you're articulating everything because the way that you went into, you know, how thorough you are about a tech pack, I think mm -hmm. that can help a lot of people to understand yeah. what really goes into designing a brand. Yeah, true. 
Cause my uh actually I have a friend I I t- uh do that with him as well I like always push him like yo make a tech deck make a tech deck because it, it it's it, it's very important at least to me and like no, like definitely and, me yeah like with me being with him while he's making his own brand like I would never push him to do something that's either wrong or put him in a bad position so I'm like if I know the answer or like know how to do it correctly I'm definitely gonna tell him how to do it right before anything right like, right press a tech deck to him a lot. All right, that's dope that you brought your friend up. Because I, that my next question was gonna be like, do you have a team where you just doing everything solo by yourself? Uh no, right, 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 right now I am solo, but I um I talk to a lot. I got a, lot, uh, a couple of friends and stuff. They they uh they actually make clothing. They have clothing brands themselves. So I would say that that definitely keeps me in a loop with it a lot. Like it, it don't really let me get like too distracted because like they call me like, yo, bro, I just I just I just did that did this. So like it definitely keep me in a loop and keep me motivated at the same time because at the same time. A lot of people don't do so because they might feel like they're alone. Like having them mm-hmm. call me, we feel like this by myself. Like they also going through the same thing as me. And you building network and resources. You know what I mean? So that's that's huge. Uh, I think that is. I always encourage people. Like uh, like I told you before, we got started. I make the custom rugs and whatnot. I always yeah. encourage people if they're interested to give it a try. Um, a lot of people feel like they're stealing ideas and things like that. And I'm going to be completely honest here. That's a very juvenile way to think about things. If you if yeah. you feel like you can make an impact in any industry, I say I say jump into it. One of the yeah. main reasons why I say that, though, is the more people that are doing it, the bigger the market becomes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. That's definitely true. Because a lot of people feel like I just like the colder brand, for example, a lot of it is getting oversaturated. But I, mm-hmm. I think it a different way, like like even how you said, like since so many people are starting to like a small clothing brand, it makes it not completely easy, but it makes it a lot easier for you to make your lane in it because it's like yo, people are used to seeing this now. Exactly, not, not too irregular, but like what you can be like your message can be irregular to like the message you're like and like the stuff you're designing, but it makes it a lot easier because it's like yo, like a lot of people are doing this, so it's like becoming more widely accepted between everybody, so it's gonna be. Uh, one day it's just gonna be regular, just to make a color sure. I mean, it's it's regular now, but it's gonna become like, like really like just a normal thing. Like, oh, he's mid brand. Yeah. yeah. What's something yeah. that you feel like uh set separates you from other other brands, whether it be local or even on a national scale? Uh, I would think the thing that separates me between like like my brand is like the the message that that's like the message is big to me. Like you, you would see me like a lot of times. Like I even like post a lot of quotes just like just to keep. Cause I know most, I got uh, over a thousand followers, so I'm like, yo, I'm just gonna post these quotes because these this quote gonna hit somebody. Somebody should sure. relate to the quote, and that a quote alone may get someone to come buy with your brand. Cause it's like, yo, like they really they like said this to me, and I was really going through this at that time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna support them. So it's like that. Like I really try to like connect with the customers on like a different level. Like keep them like while I'm just, like keep myself motivated also want to keep them motivated like whatever they want to do on like so it, it's like like i would definitely say the way i like reach out like to customers and like like well the transparency is one i want to say like like i show them like a lot of behind the scenes and like my photo shoot like like through tiktoks you can see me on there like just talking like somebody made a comment like i definitely i want to make them feel like they are part of what i'm doing like like they like right next to me to like to like a sense that's dope that's dope. And I mean, I think you kicked out the uh, interview with a with a great uh, story about your brand itself and, and being bosses and things of that sort. And it's something that a lot of people can definitely get behind and see themselves in. So that's that's a hey, that's a good point. Thank you. So uh, I'm not really sure if you want to collab with anybody, but let's just say you do want to collab with some brand that you. Like dream collab as far as brands in the lab. <sighs> It, 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 it got to be like a big brand, it could be a small brand. It could be either one. Yeah. Or I got some brands. It, I think, yeah, have you ever, you ever heard of Barriers before? Yeah, I heard of Barriers. I think you would be dope it, with They're it. from like, New York? It's, oh, yeah, yeah, from yep. New York. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. You're talking about, yeah. Uh, like, def, yo, honestly, with me, like, yeah, I guess definitely see the Barriers one, though. Like, I was just looking at they, so that's crazy you said that. I was just looking at they stuff <laughs> today. But yeah, but like as far as collabs, I definitely want to do one with uh, 
I'm not going to say like no Nike or something. That's just like, I'm not, I'm yeah. not, I don't, more like, uh, I would say, hey, as for collabs, it's, uh, if you ever heard of the brand Hellstar, you heard of it? Mm-mm. Not familiar, but I'm, I'm willing to check them out. Again, like very popular right now. Then, uh, the humble brand I told y'all about, definitely like, right. Yo, that's almost like a goal for me. Like, like it's like getting contact with him, like to like collaborate on site. But like, yeah, it probably does like right now. Oh yeah, my uh friend called the brand. His brand, brand name is uh Hiram because uh his brother died. He named it after him. But definitely have yeah. me me we talk to each other almost every day. I'm definitely collaborating with him. But hey, go ahead. Like, drop his uh drop his uh Instagram for us. Let us know. Uh wait, where I put that? Like in the chat? Or you can spell it out. We'll 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 put we'll put a poster somewhere up there. He, 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 he just started like um I wanna say like a month or two ago. Yeah. Like it's H I R I A M. Let let me know if anything. It, it should be a high room and this should be like a period and then another M. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna check that out for sure. My oh boy, so you know what I'm saying? Like he just started. I really be like keeping him in the loop. So like like even though we just started, like I'm like like farther like down like the line than he is. But he does present a lot of good ideas to me as well. Cause he, yeah. he not he not like he he knows what he's doing, not a lot. He know what he's doing. So it's like we just be trying to keep each other in the loop. Like uh as far as like even like finding manufacturers, like if I find someone and I know they're good, like I won't even let him like just go out and try to find like a uh, manufacturer that's gonna bullshit him. Like if I know I got a manufacturer that's on point, I give it to him. Like, yeah. Sure. So like yeah, definitely. He he's probably my biggest one to collab with by far anybody. Like this is like my right hand. So it's like definitely him. Gotcha, gotcha. That's dope, man. That's dope. Especially even having somebody that close to you that you want to work with. I I, I I love that, man. Yeah. All right, so as far as the brand, do you see, like, what's your goals in the next five years with your brand? Uh, Next five years, right, right now, I'm I'm really focusing on, like, more of a, like, exposure type thing. That's really yeah. what I'm, I'm trying to get it out there to people, like, get my message, what my brand is about. I'm just trying to put in these people's faces, like, just let them know, like, I'm here. Like, like a lot of things I do is, like, uh, with my design, I, like, like, say I'm, like, like just out somewhere. I get, like, a lot of, I get stickers. I just slap on places, like put them in random places. Like, and, like people will come like, yo, I just seen your design here. But it's like for people who don't know what it is, it's like, yo, they, like once they see my design on a piece of clothing, like, yo, I seen that somewhere before. So it's like really like, getting them familiar with like my designs and stuff. So really what I'm focusing on is exposure for real. I'm not really worried about like the sales part. I know that's going to come, but it's like, I really want people like to know what my brand is about. That's what I'm worried about personally. Man, look, I'm I, I'm supporting, man. <laughs> I'm hey, fucking man. with you for real, yeah. Hey, you got any more questions? Nah, man. Hey, look, you've done a great this job is, just is, talking about your brand, talking about you know your inspirations, uh, some of the things that you've had to experience, some of the challenges. I salute you again. I mean, for you to be eight, bro, you head and shoulders above niggas. Really? Yeah. Think, um. You're 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 doing a great job with the brand identity as well. The website is very clean. Um, I love even the chat with us, the join the family. Those two things are small, uh, subtle additives on a website, but people don't realize how much that validate your site, how much that adds validity to to your brand itself. So, yeah, free shipping. They got track your order. Most people know I got that on their website. Yeah, yeah man. Hey, look. Every it seems like you did ten percent off code. If you sign your yeah. email, man. Look again, yeah, you did a lot of groundwork leading into this brand, and it shows. Um, even with the photo shoot, man, you know, uh, a a very clean image to to market that global hoodie. Um, yeah. I think seeing your your people in the hoodie as well is very important, and it's dope, yeah. man. So yeah, and that like I you said with the photo shoot, I ain't gonna lie. I don't really tell them like, like, like with me, like I like to like have people I know, like kind of like represent me in the photo shoot, like yeah. represent like pieces. Like if I know you, I'll probably hit you up like, are you trying to be in this photo shoot? But I'm, right. I'm not really, like, I'm, I'm cool having someone I don't know, like coming like a uh, photo shoot, like coming to photo shoot for my brand. But I really try to get people I know for real. Cause like, as well as that, like helping my brand, that could also help them like be a model for like 
other brands and stuff like you never may, never may know who may see him like hit them up like you're trying to model for my brand now yeah. now you damn near a model now so straight i definitely trying to look out for people that's around me too Nah, that's huge, man. One thing that I'm loving about your approach to everything and just everything that you've been saying is the positive essence in it all. Um, you're not just looking out for yourself. You're looking out for your peoples as well. You put on several of uh, your homies with a brand. So we're going to check them out after we get off uh, the interview. And I'm sure everyone else will check them out. Um, yeah. So that's, I mean, again, bro, I, I salute you because not many people think like that. And it sounds like you really do have a strong network of people that you can depend on, but also work with within your own region, you know, your area um, and, and push things to a national level. I think it's really dope that you do focus on people that are closer to you to uh, do the modeling and such, because they are as well an extension of you, an extension of your brand, a representation of your brand. And when people see them out, they'll feel comfortable approaching and asking about honchos or you know uh saying hey when can i get a, a hoodie or or where can i get it rather and yeah. uh when's the next drop and such so yeah i'm like that's meeting everywhere yeah I'm, I'm big on like like just supporting the people around you like especially like if i know you literally know you bro i have no problem with supporting you no uh, i'm Big on like support and just showing love to the people around you. I'm big on that. Super duper on that. All right, so bro, yeah, I've been. This has been a good ass interview. Dude. For sure, I, man. I appreciate chop chopping it up with you. I'm gonna enlarge you so so you can pause. I'm gonna enlarge your camera so you can shout all your stuff out, man. Shout <laughs> out the brand. You know what I'm saying? Go follow HX. Well, y'all see it right here. Just put yeah. that in. Not exclusive. So like, you know what I'm saying? Go shop. Do whatever y'all got to do. Follow. Do whatever, do whatever you want, but like, just stay tuned. We got a lot more heat coming for y'all, so just stay tuned. I got y'all. Tap in with the brand. Just by the way, I don't know what else to say. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> man, hey, I had enough, honestly, man. He gave y'all more than enough reason to follow the page. If nothing else, keep an eye out. One thing I always remind people is this: you might not be interested, but somebody you know might be. Uh, someone, someone around you, someone you you might just talk to in passing they might look over your phone and see you on honcho's website you know what i'm saying and go and get a hoodie themselves so take some time y'all go and follow the brand show some love let them know reop sent you you know what i mean and let's support this brother man keep in mind he's 18 years old with all of this already in the bag you know what i mean he's not talking about things he's trying to do he's already successfully dropped five strong hoodies very strong hoodies uh got a lot more in store for everybody so if it wasn't reason enough with him explaining may y'all just take our word for it yes sir I, I, uh again i, I want to uh shout y'all out as well for having me like you know what <laughs> like like um, like like even before like uh i came on a po podcast i came looked over like what y'all been saying what y'all been doing i'm like yo i would definitely be cool with going on there and represent myself so like i just want to thank y'all for having me as well like, it means a lot y'all my first interview so thank you hey man we appreciate you if you ever find yourself in jacksonville you know what i mean you, you look us up <laughs> y'all you know, from florida yeah man duval county yeah y'all yeah. i was down there for a uh, spring break what y'all doing for that <laughs> we too <old. laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> we too <laughs> but uh yeah, but shit Shit, next time we up there, man, we might have to swing by. For sure. But we tapped in, man. We definitely going to be on the lookout for more and uh, definitely hope to build with you over time. You know what I mean? Even if it's just through our support. And so, yeah, thank you all for the support here. Thank you all for everything. Can't thank nah. you all enough. Yeah, so I'm going to cap this off, man. It's been another episode. R.E.O.P., man. Salute right. the homie. Ch tap in with Honchos. If y'all... If y'all uh, join on the website, give you 10% off free shipping, man. You can't beat that. Come on, man. You really, look, just on free shipping alone, you can't beat it. People don't understand how important that is, how much money goes into shipping alone. So, yeah, exactly, man. But yeah, this is another episode of REOP. With all that said, we out.